Hi there, welcome back. The next section where we're going to look at is the oscillator effects. Now, I'm not going to go into all of these because there's simply too many. If you want to know what each one does in detail, uh, pages 23 and 24 in the manual will tell you. But basically, it's just a an effect that you can add to the oscillator. So, let's find something. A filter. You can modulate it with this. You can add another effect. Fractals. Again, everything can be modulated if it's got a modulator parameter. And there's just loads of these things. You should mess around with them because you can get some surprising results. So yeah, have some fun with that. It's a great little um, addition and you won't find that on many other synths. Effects built right into the oscillator. And of course, the crazier you go, fun you can have. And then you've got a mixer, sub panel, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Pan, left, right, can be modulated. Can force it to be left, right, still modulate it. Volume, as you would expect. Turn it up, turn it down. Modulate and stereo width. Uh, basically, it only works in non-single mode that because you can't spread the uh, the single oscillator over a stereo field. So, like when it's in quad and stuff. Just turn these off. You hear it splitting up. much mono I would, I would imagine. Full stereo width. Very, very easy. Okay, the next section we're going to look at is the kind of bottom panel section here. Now some of this can get a little bit complicated, so I'll probably tell you to read the manual a few times, it goes into a little bit more depth. It's, it's not as difficult as it sounds and as complicated as it sounds, but um, well, we'll see how we get along. Right, let me just put that into single mode. Right, okay, so what have we got here? Right, over here, probably the best place to start is the oscillator module preset. And as you can see there, it says fin, saw, pulse. But if you click here, go to factory oscillators, you've got loads. It's a bell flipper. It's like a symbol, I guess. Sounds like insects. You want to make a super saw or something, it'd be a good place to start. And then you've got like bright saws, silk, soft. But as you can see, it's a wavetable set. See, it's not just loading one in down here, it's loading in all 16. Okay, that one's kind of the same. That's a triangle to saw wave. So say you were to select that one. It's basically what it is, it's a wavetable set, and as you can see here, I've got loads. You can, if you go to the um, Zebra website, there's links to these, there's a KVR Audio, which is a forum, it's got, that's where I got all of these from. There's loads of them. Absolutely loads. So go and check them out, I'll put the address up on here, to where you can find them. How to use this section, so you left click. Select your preset. If you make one, so say you come in here and you draw something, you can have up to 32 in here, but no, no, not in this one. 
you right click to insert a point like I'll get to that in a minute I'm just showing you how to load and save so say you created that and you want to save it just come over here right click on your mouse save oscillator one settings easy okay the next section is the key to gain it's again pretty self-explanatory this is your keyboard here now basically um, this is uh, volume scaling for the oscillator according to the MIDI note that's played so you can scale the volume depending on the MIDI note which means you can split the keyboard into two really and have different uh, oscillators playing on each one but we're not going to get into that at the moment uh, basically the horizontal axis is the MIDI note so the MIDI note goes along the keyboard obviously so let's just take that one there and drop it completely halfway along so now if I pay, play anything above here you won't hear it only comes in on whatever note that is under there which is B I guess I've just made it longer so let's just start it on a C there. Bring that up to C. Oh, so. Okay, you've got to be pretty accurate with it. But basically, I'm splitting the keyboard here. So. Okay, so it doesn't play C, but it plays D. And then above. So I could be a bit. But what you could then do is go to oscillator 2 and do the exact opposite. So the oscillator 2 will play on the above one or the below one and oscillator 1 will play on the top one. You can have two different things going on. Pretty self-explanatory. Just so you get that right, horizontal is MIDI note, vertical is gain. So the lower that is, the less. Then you've got velocity to gain. Which is just the output uh, the output level of the generated wave. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. It's the um, level scaling according to velocity. So at the moment, it's at um, the top here. So the horizontal axis is the MIDI velocity. So because all of these are at the top, everything's the same. No matter how hard I hit the key, it will play 127 or max velocity. this section here that's me hitting it as hard as I can so I've reduced the velocity for the volume control but if I come up to here it's back to maximum and you can have anywhere in between so the velocity how hard you hit the keys depends it dictates the gain so that's full hard. Because that's down, I'm not getting anything. Because that's down, no matter how. If I hit it really hard, get nothing. Hit it really soft, get it. Mess around with it. It's the easiest way to figure out what it does. It's quite hard to explain vocally. Okay, and next we've got normalize. Now, if you, if you know anything about working with waveforms, you'll probably know what normalize is. Basically, this is what analyzes the generated waveform of the output. So, let me just reset this again. So, and it's done in RMS, which is root mean square. That's how uh, the system analyzes the output level. What then happens is the low level of the waveform would be boosted so that the level would be boosted to 0 dB if the normalize was at 100%. So if I put that to 100, it's the level of the output is boosted to 0 decibels, which is maximum output. And you can hear it changing. Okay, this next bit's kind of like, it's a little bit geeky. Um, so if you want to really get into details about resolution, uh, go to page 26 of the manual. What it basically does is controls the interval time between successive waveform calculations. It's for CPU efficiency, basically. Now, showing you that... Hmm, 
you can't really show it. But if you go to page 26 and read about it, I'll give you a little bit more detail. But that's all it does, really. If you think about it for CPU efficiency, the key scaling, well, that's just classic key scaling. It's the MIDI note to oscillator pitch. Um, it's centered around the note E2, that note there. So if you leave it at 100, which it's at at the moment, it always starts there. It works on semitone steps, which is Western tuning, so you'll get a proper um, scale. You can change that, if I bring it all the way down. Now that was me going up the keyboard, but it dropped. Because it's bi it's, I think it's bipolar. And if you go maximum... That's a lot of octaves. I think it's something like six or ten octaves. I'm not sure. Again, you can check the manual if you want to get all geeky with that stuff. I'm not geeky with the key, key scale. And generally, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be left at 100. Uh, we have soft and crisp here as well. Now, again, um, it's not something you're going to use that often. It uh, basically affects how brilliant or sharp the oscillators are. But uh, just um, I, I never change it because I think they're good enough. And you can create all kinds of spikes. can't really hear it there, but in some instances you'll hear it, it adds a lot of spikes and um, it can also add aliasing as well, so it's not something I ever use really. Um, again, this section here is a bit geeky. Um, you don't really need to know the really in-depth stuff. Check pages 27 to 30 for this stuff, I think it is, but I'll give you a brief um, overview of what it is. Um, Basically, Geomorph lets you draw 32 wave forms, and each one can have 32 handles. Right click, insert point, and you can right click again, and it's like smooth selected, linear. There's a few things you can do. Peaks. You can select them all at once by doing that, and then if I go linear, it makes them all straight. You can move them all at once if they're all selected. Just click off to deselect them. If you want to get rid of them, just left click and flick up. I think it's flick up, is it? Or remove point. Right click on it, remove point. I was thinking of some automation in Cubase there, actually. So, yeah, Geomorph lets you draw waveforms with up to 32 handles inside and be able to adjust the the parts between them. Then, if you come over here, you've got Spectral Morph, which, um, this doesn't show the wave directly. It shows the wave spectrum. Now this, again, it's quite hard to explain. But let me just add some points. So this is the spectrum of the wave we're messing around with now. And you can hear that tonal stuff kicking in straight away. So it's the audio spectrum. Again, check the check the manual for the details of what these do. It just take me too long to do the videos, really. And there's a perfectly good explanation in the manual, anyway. But yeah, that's spectrum based. Let me just reset the patch. Okay, we've then got, what's next? GeoBlend. The GeoBlend gives you, a, um, this is a single cycle, so one second cycle, and it gives you 128 columns, and it's the actual shape of the waveform. So, see here? You just take that away. If you hold Shift down, I think, yeah, Shift allows you to draw lines like so. Makes it easier to edit. Right, let me just go to another one. It's right, so as you can see, because that's straight, there's nothing, no sound. So I can start to draw in harmonics. It's not actually harmonics, sorry, it's the wave shape. So if I come up here, Hold down control and do that. That should be a sawtooth. Not bad. 
if I was to do control and do this, square wave, almost, you can make it obviously a bit more even, sounds more like a square wave. So as you can see in uh, GeoBlend you've got 128 columns and it's drawn the shape of the it's drawn the shape of the waveform itself. And finally we have spectral blend. Now spectral blend um is 128 bipolar columns that range over six octaves. Now this one down the bottom here, the part down it is anti-phase. Basically you can draw in your own harmonics. It's good for kind of horn type sounds. Uh, organ type sounds, sorry. I just put up a, a new video showing you how to use this um, to create an organ, actually. But okay, yeah, I know that kind of gets a bit confusing, but if you just read the pages in the manual and watch the video, um, you'll get it easy enough. And you just experiment and then it'll just click. And you'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, easy. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope these were helpful. And I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.